Somewhere about 1939, they and they vast, you know, their loyalties and their good deeds and protecting pilgrimage to the Holy Land from being murdered and robbed, um, and they were falsely accused of blasphemy and, and being thieves and all, all that nonsense just so that a king in France, I think Richard, can take all their wealth and they were um, tortured and murdered on October 13, 1307. So look that up so that, you know, going forward, the Friday the 13th don't scare you or paralyze you into not going anywhere because it's a bad luck day. It was a horrific day, um, but it wasn't a bad luck day for us now. It's just something in history that we should all learn about because I think I, I'm a fan of the Templars. I, I research them a lot. So anyway, going forward, I didn't do a video yesterday because... Uh, I was watching the videos I did and I was talking about my craft room how it was a mess but that I knew where everything was it bothered me because it is uh, it was chaotic in there and although that's my room where I do but when people wanted to come and see what I had to purchase some of my stuff they would come back there and I would find myself saying no oh, excuse me it's a mess I have this I have this and you know what enough enough so I listen to what I said and realize it's not okay because that was um, all that mess was just creating too much stuff up here so I didn't flow freely through the room and I realized that I haven't been painting and I haven't been looking for ideas to heat press any of my vinyls or anything so so yeah listening back to my video I realized it's time so I did that for the most part yesterday but then as I mentioned when we go back to clean up the messes that we have so that we can fully become the person that we are meant to be in our moment now um, it's gonna cause some discomfort in going back and, and feeling all of that and then acknowledging it well the same thing goes with tangible items because here I am cleaning out this back room and some of the items filtered back here into my back porch which i love to keep it this is like my sanctuary so now I, as i'm talking i'm looking at ironing board that i'm going to trash but it's leaning up on my wall here and then some of the stuff filtered into my kitchen and then into my living room and i this morning i that's what i was working on and then i stopped because it becomes overwhelming it, it's an overwhelming uh what i what i've allowed to happen, what I've allowed the mess, the baskets of junk mail, and, and I, I don't know how did I allow that to happen, but it happened. But I'm glad because I'm finding stuff, and guess what? Now I'm putting things in their proper place. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it at a slow pace, but I'm doing it. And just like everything we have to do in life, we have to do it with a commitment and the energy and knowing that, okay, this has to be done because it's. It's for the better, you know, for the, the temporary sacrifice that we must do with our inner selves as well as what surrounds us. It's a temporary sacrifice, you know, for the long-term gain that we foresee or we expecting from ourselves. Remember, we must hold ourselves accountable for what happens in our space before we can hold anyone else accountable for how they are with us. So uh, it's a little tedious, um, the constant just going through stuff. It's, it's just so time consuming, which I, I didn't realize how I did it. So I must have just been throwing it here. It, remember I said easy is just easy and then we have to pay the price later on. Easy being easy comes with a price. So, and that's what I'm doing. So I, I apologize for that. And, and I have come to the reality that I might not be able to do these every day. When I do do these, it is because my husband has been fed and he is um, peacefully sleeping and relaxing his body. And that's when I come out here and do the videos because I, I have to make sure that he is okay that he's, he has eaten and he's comfortable and he's either watching TV or he's asleep and right now he's asleep and he's just snoring a wonderful lullaby. Um, so 
I also wanted to talk, which we probably will do ongoing, is about um, once we, we, in the process of learning to accept our flaws we, and, and our wonderful gifts, because sometimes, you know, I for many years couldn't accept the compliment. So we have to also accept the, the beauty of ourselves. Accept it. Accept what do you have that's beautiful. Because this right here, this doesn't count. Because this with time fades, you know. And anything can happen to this outer beauty. It's the beauty that we hold in here. The compassion that we have for others. Uh, the understanding that we have for others. Once once we know that it's all here for us and, and it's a beautiful thing and, and we want to share. And let's share. Um, and I say all this because I've come um, to realize in the situation that I am in with my husband that um, not everybody wants to handle uncomfortable situations. So they put up excuses. And I'm just going to put it out there. Whoever likes it, fine. But it is my belief. It, it is what I will tolerate, what I consider unacceptable. If you know someone who has a terminal illness, and, and I'm gonna put this out there for all of you, because sometimes we might not realize what we're doing, or maybe we think what we're doing is the best thing for all parties involved, and and, and I'm gonna explain to you why it's not. When, you're, um, when you come into contact with somebody that has a terminal disease, whether you just met them or you've known them all your life, you've worked with them in certain jobs, you met them, you know, mowing your lawn, it doesn't matter. And that person has accepted that he or she has a terminal disease. It's best to stay positive, but do you know that it's important for you to be a part of that person's journey. It's important for that person to know that although he has a terminal disease, that he is still loved, that he is still acknowledged. Because although they may think it's fine and they enjoy the people who are around them, there's always that, that little pebble that I spoke of earlier that just keeps jabbing us as to why, what have I done anything or, and then you ask, why haven't you visited or, and their, their excuse is, oh, I just can't. It's hard for me to see them in that, in that position. It's hard for me to see how sick they are or how they're deteriorating or progressing in, in their ailments. And I think it's just, uh, just, it's bullshit. Because this is not about you. This is not about how it makes you feel. This is about stepping out of your comfort zone and, and making someone else feel like they matter. It's bad enough knowing you have a terminal disease, but it's worse seeing the people drop off from you, not call you anymore. Don't stop over and visit. Not just that, that just shows them. The only thing they're understanding is you don't want to be a part of their life right now. You don't want to be a part of their journey. And they're still alive. They can still talk. They can still interact and participate with your company. So what does it matter if they sit in a wheelchair or if they're wearing a breathing mask or for those who are on chemo, if they've lost all their hair, what, what, how does that affect you by coming to visit this individual when this individual who is actually going through the crises is welcoming you, is, is happy that you stop by and visit them. If someone has completely lost every hair on their body and they still wanna sit there and chat with you and reminisce or share whatever it is, happy thoughts, positivity. How is that hard on you when this person's living it and is still wanting to share and participate in your life? So I don't understand that. To me, that, that's just a, a whole bunch of excuses that, that, that shouldn't be because you know what? 
the very people who say, oh, it's just hard for me to see him like that. I, I can't. I want to remember him the way he was. Those would be the first fools to want to be at the door of the funeral parlor waiting to come in and give their last respects to an empty shell in a casket. So you can't interact with someone where they're alive, where you can draw strength from. Because if, if you're sharing your time with somebody who has a terminal disease and they're there and they're laughing with you and they're participating and, and they're reminiscing, that's where you draw strength you never thought you could. Because here you are able, as I mentioned earlier, to get up, Take a shower, eat breakfast, dress yourself, get in your car, go wherever it is you have to go. And this person can't. But yet they're sitting there smiling, laughing, reminiscing. So there, to me, those are just excuses. You don't want to take time out of your day to come visit someone. And I guess that's okay for you. But you, though, you're only treating yourself out of life lessons. And, and it's um, not okay with me. Totally not okay with me. Uh, and because I dealing with someone with a terminal disease, I can do but so much. I cannot feel the emptiness in his heart. I cannot pick up and, and cup it up and throw it out. The sorrow, the sadness, the disappointments that dwells within him, knowing that family and friends who claim they love him on one side of their mouth, on the other side of their mouth saying they can't see him like that. So, although I do my best to take care of him and the best of the abilities that I have, when it comes to those moments, all I can do is wipe the tears. And then he tells me, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm over it. This chick right here is not. Because it just, it, it does anger me, it disappoints me, because I don't want to see him sad, but there's nothing I can do. So all I can do is say that for any of you out there who know someone, family, a friend that has a terminal disease, take the time out. I, I'm sure they don't want you up there in their house every day because I don't want people in my house every day. Make it a point to at least call once a week, visit twice a month if, you, if, if you're, you know, you have a lot or you're far once a month but just make the effort just people who who we're surprised who comes and sits with him or even if they come for a half hour just puts that big smile on his face he doesn't expect them to come all the time but when they do it, it's solid it's solid so make an effort make an effort and enrich your life and and know that you are doing what you are supposed to do by breathing is being of service to others, even in the most minute effort that you put in, that you're doing of service to others. It goes a long way, and it makes you sleep better at night. And that that's if you care, uh, because we must we must realize that once we do the clean up in our own in our own selves, in our temple, in our castle. Once we do that, we're not going to be 100%. You shouldn't be 100% because as long as you're living, you're going to learn new things. You're going to make new mistakes. You know, you're going to have the opportunity to correct them. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey of ups and downs. And that's okay. You're going to have to go on those journeys and you want to go on those journeys, you know. And But in the middle of you healing and fixing and cleaning and acknowledging and accepting and celebrating. Celebrate with others. Celebrate your accomplishments with others and let them know that they too, you know, light that fire in their eyes and let them know you too can get out of where you're at. You too can change your circumstances by beginning to believe in yourself, by believing that God is directing you somewhere, that he has given you to ability to acknowledge that you need to change something and changing it. And then, you know what? In the midst of you doing all of that for yourself, you can do it for someone else. Be there for someone else. You know, phone call, a visit, 
you know what I love to get? I love to get mail, handwritten cards in the mail. I love letters in the mail. I still love that. To me, I correspond with my brother all the time, and I love it. It upsets me that his handwriting is better than mine, but I love it. We correspond through mail. We, you know, I put a stamp on an envelope. Oh, I love that. I must be old, but I love that. It's just the little things too. It's just it's the little things that build. So do it. Try and think about that. Um, before I leave, and I hope you learned something from today. I know that I learned that I can't. I have to cut this video a little short today because I have a mess awaiting my presence. But I want to talk to. Remember, I mentioned Cricket Whisper is my business, and and then I have my art series called The Power of Pussy. And they, they each have um, a little story and behind that. But I wanted to share Cricket's Whisper because I do speak a lot about women empowerment and, and loving ourselves and being the breeders of life and the awesome aunties for those who choose not to be parents. You know, and a reminder that you, we must take care of ourselves before we can take care of anybody else. So I wrote uh, my mission statement for my business and I wanted to share that with you. Um, before I close out, and um, Cricket's Whisper, the logo, I don't know, I'm going to show you the logo, that's that's the logo, Cricket's Whisper, me time, look at how cute she looks with her high heels, and she's, she's doing shh, well it says, I've created a line for the strong woman who juggles her duties as a wife, a mother, and a professional, with dedication and force. I dedicate this line to the women of strength who awakens each morning ready to put her needs last, as we all do. The fragile woman who never takes time for herself to simply take a deep breath before continuing the fight. To the woman so engrossed in her surroundings, she forgets to give herself a warm embrace. We as women need to remember to stop, take a breath, and recharge our souls, quiet the outside noise, and listen to the whisper of hope, the whisper of love, the whisper that tells us that we are special, we are amazing, and honey, we are magnificent. My desire is for all women to take time daily to pray, to meditate, to sing out loud, or dance to that inner music that we all have. In a loud voice, tell yourself and the world to thyself, I promise, me time. The cricket's whisper is a reminder to seek the silence within, to listen for the whisper of hope, quiet the noise around your being and find a peace within your soul. So may your soul sing and your spirit dance each and every day of your life. Hasta mañana. Chao. Namaste.